Greenskins time once again as we have the legendary Mr. Akitas manning up the Greenskins over here with Warzog at the helm of this army. Lots of, uh, well, a very Akitas-ish lineup. Lots of Orc Boys, lots of Savage Orcs, lots of Skirmish Cav over here. And we got the Bretonians on the other end. We're gonna actually going to go to full play, full play speed already. Bunch of Peasant Maws for a little bit of Meat Shield action, plus some very lowly Men at Arms to help out on the front line battles. And of course, the Knights of the Realm and all of the very powerful Heavy Hidden Knights of the Bretonians are going to be involved in this one. The Grail Knights in the back, and of course, some Knights of the Realm on the other flank as well. Plus, ha, the Royal Hippogriff Knights in the sky alongside Mr. King Lu Wen. So it is a very powerful air force here going on, and even some powerful ground infantry forces here too from the Bretonians with the battle programs from Regiment of Renown. And this is going to be a nice and fast match, I imagine, as both sides waste no time, not even getting involved with the skirmish game. Both sides just going at it with uh, with infantry forces and a little bit of a quick maneuver by those four scalp and spotter rider rushers. I'm curious what they, exactly they were trying to go for right there. They just had a, a shit ton of, uh, of missile fire while the rest of the infantry forces try to get into position here. Orc boy is going to take on the peasant mob. No problem there. That should be an easy win for themselves. And the missile support from the greenskin is going to do away with the meta arms before they even get started. So very quick little firing match right there. Now I understand why he did initiate that early rush with those spider riders and on the other end it looks like the peasants are just gonna be sitting there as little uh, pin cushions for all the archer fire coming in from the orc era boys in the back line and here comes the men at arms going to take on these orc boys and i think that that's a battle that the orc boys should very easily win and it is really not looking good for the infantry forces of bretonia even the battle programs over here getting done away with very very early they cannot outstand the loonies the eight peak loonies over there and it is really going to be all of the bretonian uh of course cavalry that is going to be the uh, hopefully the the equalizers within this match so they do get some beautiful back charges into the savage orc biggins uh, nice and unabated for that one plus the royal hippogriff knights getting involved with the rest of the orc era boys over here and king luen trying to sniff out mr Wurzog as the missile support from the bretonians streams on in and really going after all of these flying targets which is very very smart however or sorry the bretonians uh, searching out uh, mr Wurzog um and company as the uh, savage orc biggins try to zero in on mr king luen but uh, King Luen, a bit of a tank there, and not going to be easily done away with. And in fact, if he can just lock in on Warzog, he should be able to do him in, especially with the help from the Royal Hippogriff Knights, which are right in right in line. And the Knights of the Realm all surrounded, all within striking distance of Warzog. So he is a bit in trouble there. He has to be very, very careful here. The infantry forces for Bretonia are quickly being done away with, so he really has no problem there. However, it's the cavalry options, the high-value targets here, that are going to be doing all of the work for the Bretonians. And I'm curious to see how he actually is going to maneuver around and make use of this. Grail Knight's also getting a phenomenal charge into the Savage Orc Biggins and throwing them way the far asunder. And it's really only the Forest Bot Goblin Spider Rider archers that are able to get some nice shots in before actually getting in, in, um, uh, uh, targeted themselves by the Knights of the Realms. But Knights of the Realms won't be able to do too much there as they are pretty damn beat up themselves and have to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more careful within this matchup. And now we have the Royal Hippogriff Knights plus King Luen in not necessarily the best matchups they want. Warzogs has taken a lot of damage over there. However, not enough to really shake him off just yet. And he is able to just get away and he will and he will get away. In fact, it's very interesting to see how this one works out as uh, King Luen does away with the Goblin Big Boss and uh, really being a powerhouse from the sky. But it's Warzog that he really wants to zero in on alongside those Royal Hippogriff Knights. And if they can do that, they might be able to, they actually might be able to equalize this one out. But for right now, the bounce powers is very much even although i feel <laughs> although i feel like that's more of a formality in the sense that uh greenskins feel like they're in very strong control right now with uh with all of the bretonian foot soldiers can complete disarray really not looking good another unit of uh, paddle pilgrims does get shattered on off they're not gonna be returning to this one at all and all of the missile units from the greenskins are by their legendary lord mr warzog and firing directly into this pile of hippogriff knights plus mr king luen and that is not going to be doing too well for a of course, the Bretonians who are really starting to take a lot of damage here and really starting to feel like, uh, oh my god, now getting a massive, uh, a massive, uh, Jesus Christ, man, they they, uh, they they just got the effigy of get right on top of all of these Royal Hippogriff Knights, and that's going to officially break them off, and they are done away with, completely out of this game, no more of them left, and it's really just King Luen plus a couple units of, or maybe just one unit of uh, Grail Knights over here. I don't think that there's any more cavalry units available for the Bretonians, just incredibly beat up ground 
ground forces, which uh, really don't have much left themselves. In fact, the second that those orc boy boar boys turn their uh, turn turn their uh, their boars towards them, they are in big fucking trouble. And King Luwin now going to commit to the battle, going directly after Wurzog. But even Wurzog will be able to get away from this one, as all of the infantry units from the Greenskins just hound in on King Luwin, and now he's locked down, nowhere to go. Grail Knights over here, same business as they are forced away, starting to waver themselves, even with their uh, saintly like vigor but uh, even that won't be enough and now it's just really King Lu Wen and uh, some <laughs> some you know some peasants in the back over there too but uh, not all that much left to their name as they do so take some charges to the face you can see lowly peasants just being flung up around this uh, this battlefield as is right now but King Lu Wen able to break away and track down Wurzog and he should be able to take him down right here there's really nothing no way that Wurzog can get away King Lu Wen can just swoop on him and the next the next blow should kill him he's incredibly low and there he goes down he's down on the ground skull is or sorry not skull but his uh, his mount just gonna run away there and King Lu Wen has done it but I feel like that is just a uh, that is just a spiritual win not a real win because the Greenskins still got plenty of forces all around the map now they have lost their leader so they're not gonna be able to really stick in in you know in a long-term battle but I think that they have enough to, in order to do the Bretonians in because King Lu Wen will not be able to do all of this on his own or at least I would figure that he's not able to do all this on his own as King Lu Wen does swoop down in on the Goblin big boss he wants to take him down next and he will be able to take him down next there he goes he goes down almost immediately and uh now all of a sudden the match does feel a little bit more in favor of the bretonians but not before all of their infantry forces start to shatter away and that's going to be a massive morale blow as uh even the grail knights are just not not really operational right now with only five models left in that unit and uh, not much fighting fighting power left within them over here it looks like the boar boys will be able to lock in on king luen and all the infantry forces are going to be able to surround and this should be the last of the last for the Bretonians, and they will all be fought right here. If King Luen goes down, it is all but it is all over for Bretonia, and it feels it feels like this is like this is almost there already. Anyways, however, I do I do fear that King Luen actually can pull through sometimes. He is quite the powerhouse, of course, but uh, even the Arrow Boys over here are still getting some nice shots in. He's a big old target for them to tar for for them to uh, hit. And uh, with the rusty arrows also get on top of them, that armor, that armor sundering will come in very, very much handy right here. As uh, even the orc boys and the savage orc biggins will be able to do quite a fair bit more damage with the lowered armor from King Lu Wen, who is slowly and finally going down and faster, faster now with each and every passing moment as he does start to waver away himself. And that should be just about it. Yes, he does shatter away, and that is it. A pure victory for Mr. Akita's point, another win out of his bunghole, but he's done it once again. I don't know how the fuck he does it, but he does it every goddamn time, and that was very 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 impressive against sexy swami a well-played game on both ends but credit to mr akitas for that one and i'll see you in the next one take care